He's been leading the biggest police force in Canada since 2015. But come Friday, Police Chief Mark Saunders will be leaving his post tonight. We speak with him about his decision to step down eight months before his contract was set to expire. And there's no real big aha moment to it. Uh, predominantly family issues, which I, I, I certainly won't uh, get into the details of that. But, you know, as chief, there, there's never a great day. And, and each and every week, as, as trying to make decisions, there's always something critical uh, that was a concern. So finding the right time as chief uh, was a problem, but, but as a dad and as a husband, it, it wasn't too hard to figure out. A lot of the questions people want to know is, what's next for the police chief? Are you still going to stay in policing? <laughs> well, no, I will not be staying in policing. Uh, this is more uh, of a reset. There, there are some things that, that need to be done uh, personally, and, and then after that, uh, I'll go just about anywhere. It depends on on uh, what I uh, am interested in and, and what I like. But and what's also, that? It, it's I'm wide open right now. Uh, not a whole lot with politics, that's for sure, but uh, a lot of other lanes and opportunities are, are presented themselves and I'll see which way I go at the end of the day. When you look back five, ten years from now, what do you want your legacy as a police officer to be? Never look for the legacy piece. I, I've always, uh, I've loved this organization and, and, and from day one, minute one, uh, I've always been, uh, if you uh, don't be part of the problem, be part of the solution. I represent the office of the chief. So even though I'm called chief, I represent an office. And so each and every day, I, I did my best to, to maintain the proper integrity uh, for that seat that I, I had the privilege of sitting in. So uh, in the legacy of the Office of the Chief, you have to make sure that it is integral from all aspects, that it is always uh, uh, balanced when it comes to making decisions, that your critical decisions are always collaborative and informed to the best of your ability. Take a knee! Take a knee! Take a knee. You're Toronto's first black police chief. What impacts do you think that's had on the police force and on the city, if any? I come in with a lens that, that no other chief has had, coming in uh, as, as a black man and, and as a black father. And, and with that, I can see certain things differently. I can have uh, more empathy or more understanding towards particular emotions that are out there. Um, I, I've had the opportunity, I guess, of being in certain corners that no other chief has been in, uh, because I was listening to those voices and also helped in, in the training and the thought processes uh, to help this organization. Ahead on City News, policing throughout the years, the events that shaped the city of Toronto and the new role Chief Saunders wants to play in fixing one of the city's worst problems. After nearly four decades long career in policing, Toronto Police Chief Mark Saunders will be stepping down from this role this Friday during his tenure, violence that has shaken the city. There was the deadly van attack, the Danforth mass shooting, the discovery and arrest of a serial killer that targeted a community and ever escalating gun violence. Is there a case that stays with you that has kept you up at night? There are some cases. And Again, uh, now that I have such a different lens, my compassion towards the victims, I don't take it lightly. So to put the names out right now would, would cause undue stress. It should cause undue stress, and I, I don't think that it's fair. Uh, but that's between myself and, and those families, and they know uh, who they are and, and, and uh, how I feel about it. I want to talk a little bit about um, gun violence. Toronto has had record shootings. Um, many of these involved young black men. What do you think are some of the factors there um, when it comes to increased shootings in our city? Well, when you look in the a, in a communities, the neighborhood improvement areas, it, it, it's very clear, and, and, and the stats talk to it. You know, why is there overrepresentation in, in child welfare? Why is it in the educational system young black men uh, do not uh, graduate high school at twice the rate versus any other? Why is it when we talk about low income, it's predominantly uh, within the black community? Uh, where are the libraries and other uh, uh, places for uh, young men and women to have opportunity to advance in, in school? These things are, are the symptoms that create these young men uh, that feel they have no opportunity uh, to move towards that, that street gang subculture. And there need to be, uh, I think, stronger, more robust, sustainable uh, resources put in place. So how do you stop that cycle? Um, uh, during, before, during, and after are, are necessary components to be really looked at. Is this an area you see yourself involved in after policing? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, I, I think I come with some knowledge that, that could uh, help. 
in, in the reduction of young men killing each other. With Project Community Space, we saw more police officers entrenched in um, communities, and some might say increased surveillance, perhaps. Um, there were some critics of this, of this program. Is this something you still stand by? The reality is, you talk to the mothers, talk to the mothers. When those mothers are saying to you, I don't put my kids out in the afternoon because I'm afraid they're going to get shot. We need more police presence. And you get the vast majority of people in that theme. So um, listen to everybody to strike the fair balance and what type of resource should be in play. But I, I can tell you the vast majority of people, they enjoy uniform presence in the neighborhoods. And again, it's not about the enforcement piece. It's about being there, developing relationships. So we've put our, our, our community response units in there. We put our neighborhood community officers embedded in these areas, working on strong relationships. But whether we like it or not, the highest level of violence, especially gun violence, is in those neighborhoods. We have to be there. We don't choose to be there, but we have to be there. We're also working on gang exit and we're starting to see some success with that. Our interview with the police chief lasted a little over 30 minutes and we'll have more of this discussion for you tomorrow on City News. What he thinks about Black Lives Matter, calls to defund the police and the advice he has for Toronto's next police chief. For City News, I'm Faisa Amin.